going to start our day at Amman Citadel. This site has been occupied since Neolithic times. It has had every change known to mankind and these little pillars just here tell you about each of the stages. Normally I'm driven to walk on the lower path, get up to the top and come down to the high path. Today I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to go the higher path first. So normally I would start up here at the Temple of Hercules and just opposite the Temple of Hercules is the Bronze Age cave stone burial site. But we'll have a look at that a little bit later. What I'm going to do is walk up the path up this way to the Umayyad kind of area of the citadel, the precinct, and the Roman area. And then I'll circle my way back around and I will finish with the cutest, the greatest, I think the most wonderful little museum here on Amman Citadel. What you are looking at is a lime kiln. Lime was used for building and construction and um, the kiln was fired with wood and it would take about three days to prepare the lime. Walking up to a Byzantine church. Why do we know it's a Byzantine church? The sign says that it's a Byzantine church. But of course, we can see the typical structure of the main aisle, the two naves on either side, the semicircular at the top where the altar was. Pretty easy to spot a Byzantine church. This Byzantine kind of complex, Byzantine just means Eastern Roman Empire, Byzantium, surrounded here by fabulous buildings and structures. This one here with its amazing mosaic has a well. From this space we can see the cistern, the water, the Umayyad precinct. You walk through that Umayyad church palace and across the other side of the courtyard is the Roman area. This amazing space is the cistern, 12 and a half meters across, holding 1,350 liters of cubic liters of water with the uh, base would be about two and a half meters because of the displacement of the rocks on top of it. What we can examine from the cistern, we look down here on the ground. And we can see a water channel going to this building. And this amazing structure is the bathhouse. The cool, medium and hot. Frigidarium, Tepidarium and Caldarium, the area of the Hammam, the bathhouse. So heading through this ornamental gateway into the Umayyad precinct. You can see the reconstructed stone just here where it mirrors the original stone beside it. But one of the interesting reconstructions of this space is the ceiling under the copper dome. Absolutely spectacular. So then when you come out of the ornamental gateway, then you have the colonnaded street with the reception part of the palace just to the back there. 
So if you can imagine this colonnaded street with each one of those pillars there having an arch over the top of it, it would have been quite impressive. Being within a restricted area, it would have gates controlling it at either end. At the other end of the colonnade street, you can actually see a row of stones leading to that open drainage area that I will just put a little bit of footage in here. And that's part of the water system, the drainage system, collecting water, because if you don't have water, you don't have life. Entering through the courtyard to the throne room. This is the furthest you can get in the Umayyad precinct. But you also get an absolutely fabulous view of Amman city. The Ragadan flagpole is erected in the grounds of the Ragadan palace stands 126.8 meters high can be seen 20 kilometers away as the flag is 60 by 30 meters feels like it's a city that doesn't sleep <laughs> ah. from the ornamental gate type area and you came down the colonnaded street, which is just there. It has a little bit of a walkway just here. And potentially you could imagine something like a walkway or a little street. And then just here you would have an oven of some kind. If we were to go in to have a look in this building, things that kind of indicate to me that it was a fireplace was the shape, the shape of these stones and the fact that there is almost like some benches or some sort of structure just here. So this tells me that it could potentially have been a business like a bakehouse or something of that nature. So this building is a little bit interesting to me for a couple of different reasons. It has three entry points. It has one there, one over here, and one over on this wall. It's three doorways. The same as this building has three doorways. One over there, one directly opposite it, and one on this wall here. And outside that there is a row of columns, which probably indicates some kind of portico that people would walk underneath to gain entry into these buildings. So moving up here into the Roman precinct, it is a fairly square building that is flanked by three rows of columns. That probably indicates to me that there would have been like a corbel or something between each of them to allow for another layer, to have a two-story building potentially. The other thing that I can see here in this space is these two round circles. Those manhole covers are modern manhole covers, but you can see next to them the smaller that are forming a circle, those would have been more original stones and the manhole covers, the original manhole cover is gone and you can actually see all of the little stones around so that would be also part of the water system. Because another interesting part of this Roman type area surrounded by these rows of columns, that centre section I would anticipate it being a, a fountain or a well or a grassed area 
because the Roman buildings are often built around a little inner courtyard and inner garden. This is also part of the Roman precinct, just behind the little museum there. And you can see a collection of little rooms. Now I'm just going to focus in on that Italian tour group. One of the advantages of coming to a place like the Amman Citadel, and if you do have a tour guide initially to explain some of the larger elements of the site, and then take some additional time to explore yourself so that you might see some additional smaller things that you might have missed with the guided tour. I've come up at the end of the Roman precinct and I'm overlooking the Byzantine precinct. We still have to go over there to the Temple of Hercules. We walked past that Byzantine area over towards the cistern. To the Umayyad area. Through the Roman area. So I am standing here. Just above the Bronze Age burial chamber near the Temple of Hercules. And I'm just going to be walking through this kind of little area that the last time I was here was not open to the public. So every time I come and visit, something is new and changed. So I've walked down those little terraces Having a look at this wonderful sarcophagus here, behind that group of people is the hand of Hercules. And now we'll go and explore the temple. Such an amazing space. Looking at these two items, I would make some hazard a guess they are a grindstone. You can see that the grain would be put in here. Two poles would be on either side, allowing the person to be pushing it around. And the lower base, if you can see on this one here, is a conical shape, is a cone shape. And so the top stone would be grinding against that conical base stone grinding the grain into a flower. Ancient engineering. Looking at this item here, which is supposedly the hand of Hercules, and this item just here, which is the elbow of Hercules. With the proportions of this statue, it would make the statue about 13 meters tall. And if I try and do a reverse selfie, and try and get this hand to look twice as big as it genuinely is. So I'm here at the Temple of Hercules and you can see how tiny the hand is. There's the elbow, but as I say, it was in the proportions of a 13 metre statue. I'm not necessarily going to go into the museum today because I've got a couple of videos already about the museum and it is the cutest, most wonderful museum going from Paleolithic, Neanderthal, right down to a mesh of steel. It is just, it's a tiny museum, it only has four halls but it's well worth a visit. That would be a grinding wheel that would be on its side at the moment. Um, you would make it upright with a post through the middle and um, it would be moved around by a, a horse or an oxen of some kind. Another cup of conical shapes. They would be the centre of some grindstones. Uh, 
I know it almost looks like it's discarded, but I guess it is place there for people to observe. You can start to get a real appreciation of the size of the Temple of Hercules with that person moving over the antiquity. I've just spotted those couple of sarcophagus. Pretty impressive. I'll be walking down there in a second, have another look closer and uh, go and have an examine of whatever that is just beside that wall. Okay, I've moved over closer to that stone that I noticed while I was on that upper terrace. And I have still no idea. The bits that I do find a little bit interesting would be the fact that this section is square. That would tell me that the, the post it had to have been wood because there was no real iron that size would have to have um, penetrated down the centre of that and maybe a, a stone of some kind would have gone around and around. Maybe it is a crushing uh, tool. Um, could it be a water with water coming up the centre maybe and somehow and spilling into a trough or a basin of some kind? Hmm. If anybody out there knows the answer to that, let me know in the comments below. Fabulous looking structure. And these areas I would anticipate without reading the sign up there will be some form of guard tower because there's another one a little further up. It looks like a defensive structure. For the existence of any population you need a water source and this is the ancient system, the ancient water system. It's over the whole of the precinct. It's about a kilometre, a kilometre and a half long maybe. There's several different water collection areas. Fabulous. So from the Amman Citadel you can see the Roman amphitheatre. And there is a smaller theatre just here. I've got a couple of videos on my YouTube channel about the Roman Amphitheatre, so check that out. I might not necessarily go there this visit, but we'll just wait and see. And another thing that you can see from up here, it's not uncommon all around Amman to have murals painted on the side of buildings. They're just spectacular. <laughs> 